Well, let's ask Scott Sheffield. He's the CEO and president of Pioneer Natural Resources, the second largest crude oil producer in Texas. Scott, welcome. Thank you, Kelly. It's great to be on your show. Well, and it's such a, such a good time to hear from you because there's growing concern about uh, how poorly, I guess, uh, Texas and, and oil producers in this country might do if the oil price stays at these levels. Yes, I think the market's obviously oversold. Uh, it's come down about $11. It's back up, uh, again, about 4% today. Uh, I think with the vaccines coming out, uh, it'll have just have a short-term effect. OPEC really had it together. Uh, we saw $60 WTI, $65 Brent about four to five weeks ago. And so we thought there was more upside. And so it's, it's a small setback. The market's going to come back. And by the market coming back, do you mean the price? I'm curious, for you, for your company, what's kind of your break-even uh, for profitability? And what, what would you guess is kind of the break-even for the whole region? Yes, the, the Midland Basin in West Texas is the lowest break-even anywhere in the U.S. of all the shell plays. Uh, Pioneer, it's around $45 a barrel. Uh, and the companies, as you know, we're all focused on free cash flow and return on capital employed. There's been a shift from starting from 19 in all the um, EMP upstream companies. Uh, Pioneer is going to throw out about $5 billion of free cash flow over the next five years. So it's a, it's a very important shift. Instead of taking every dollar uh, that we get and put it back in the ground, we're only putting about 70 percent of our revenues back into the ground, and the rest is going for buybacks and dividends. Would it help you if OPEC uh, cut its uh, crude allocations? I don't think they're going to rush into it. If, it. if it lasts longer and there wasn't any vaccine coming into the market quickly, I think OPEC would probably cut about a half a million barrels a day. I think Saudi uh, would like to see Brent get back up to about 65 to $70. Let me ask you a, a, a long-range question, and, and it's kind of off the current market, but the other, one of the stocks we've been talking about incessantly over the last week has been Tesla. And I wonder how you, in your business, think about uh, electric or non-fossil fuel-fueled vehicles and whether you, you're at a point where you're contemplating that trend ramping up and what effect it might have on your business. Walk me through how you think about it, if you do. Yes, thank you, Tyler. Uh, I try to read as much as I can about it. First of all, EV vehicles, a little bit over 1% of the new car market. So it's still very, very slow pace, even though Tesla is up, China is up significantly in EV vehicles. Most people don't realize when they buy an EV vehicle that 64% of the electricity to charge it comes from fossil fuels. Natural gas is gonna be the biggest demand driver if we all buy electric vehicles um, tomorrow in the US. Um, gas demand will have to increase significantly because that's the, the cheapest fuel to power electricity, and there's plenty of it in the U.S. It's, it's absolutely true, Scott, but at the same time, you, now that you've had a firm like BlackRock come out and say they're going to divest from coal, you have to imagine oil is going to be next. Uh, what would you say to somebody who's 23 years old and says, I don't want to invest in an oil and gas company? We hear a little bit of that now, but most people that think through it, uh, how do we get rid of 100 million barrels a day? And we're still growing roughly about a million barrels a day per year. Most people predict we won't see peak oil demand till 2030 to 2040. So how, how do we all of a sudden overnight change a market that's using 100 million barrels of oil per day? It's going to take a good 50 years to shift to alternative energy, in my opinion. Sure, but in the meantime, people are happy to just kind of lay the blade. In other words, they'll say, I understand that I'm a user of this product, but I just don't want to invest in it. If you go the way of tobacco stocks, it could still be a lucrative investment or, or no? Yes. As I mentioned, we're changing to the free cash flow model. And so if people want to invest in this sector, what's interesting, Pioneer, I, I said this the other day on Brian Sullivan's show in Miami, but Pioneer was the only EMP stock uh, up greater than the S&P 500 the last 10 years. The refining sector, if you look at it, it changed its model. The refining sector, several of the, of the refiners have beat the S&P 500 the last 10 years. They changed to a free cash flow model. Now it's time for the producers to change to that same model. And I think 
investors like BlackRock will continue to buy the stocks. One more thing, Scott, before you go. You mentioned $45 is roughly your break-even price. We're not that far above it. Uh, are you contemplating layoffs? Uh, are you contemplating, uh, you know, cutting off production? What kinds of measures are, are being put into place here? Yes, uh, Pioneer has the best balance sheet of any, uh, of any upstream company in the U.S. Uh, we look at a debt to EBITDA, it's less than 0.5. Uh, so we can basically pay off our debt in less than six months if we wanted to. Secondly, Pioneer is very heavily hedged. We're a firm believer in hedging. So when we saw events such as Abcake, we saw events uh, with Soleimani, the airstrikes, Pioneer was very aggressive in hedging in the market. So Mr. Pioneer Sheffield, not, yep, no. go ahead. No, I was just going to finish. We are not going to do any of the things that you said. So, got it.